Thanks, Zim Lady. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for jumping on to the June 2024 Greater Philadelphia Mac Admins uh, Meetup. Uh, we have a few slides to cover as usual. So this is our post-WWDC event. So we'll uh, jump right into it. And then uh, after uh, the slides, we'll stop the recording and have an open discussion. So hopefully people have questions and things about uh, 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 new Mac OS stuff that may have been announced. So of course, our agenda as usual, we are going to cover all of the OSs, our WWDC 2024 updates, some items of interest, conferences as well. So first section, what's new? Mac OS Sonoma 14.4, 14.4.1, and 14.5, and I believe there's beta out. Um, Typical, uh, we are now in the typical release cycle for this OS. It is now, uh, I guess we would consider it in the security cycle now. I don't know if we mode. would. Maintenance mode, yeah. I know there's technically no maintenance mode or anything in Mac OS, but that's what we're going to call it because uh, I doubt that there's going to be any new features. Uh, the 14.5 was the one that contains some new features in it, which I believe the only new big, the features that they announced uh, in their uh, release notes were something like um, new, uh, what, what, I can't remember what it was. There were just some really basic things that were announced and it. it did fix some smart card issues that we had. So that was really nice. Uh, but yeah, so we are officially in, we're, we're going to just deem maintenance mode for macOS Sonoma. Uh, and there are some links there for the release notes and the enterprise release notes. Let's not forget about Mac OS Ventura 13.6.5, 13.6.6, and 13.6.7 were released. Uh, long since in bug fix and security maintenance mode, we're going to call that again. Just our links there because we want to, you know, Apple still supports it, obviously. So we want to make sure that uh, gets the love. And who can forget about Monterey, which is something I forgot about a long time ago, and hopefully many others have as well. Uh, this is probably, uh, so 12.7.4 and 12.7.5 were released. Uh, this is probably, 12.7.5 may be the last release for Mac OS Monterey, um, unless Apple decides to give us a final, final release in sometime in October or September. Um, yeah, if, yeah, there's a, probably a critical security vulnerability that they need to patch. Exactly. That's when they'll definitely want to um, they do drop that. Before they drop Sequoia. Yep. Uh, also, why haven't you updated yet? If you are not, or if you're still running Monterey, unless you have a real big reason to run it, you should still update. But there are some release notes and enterprise release notes. Typical fanfare for all of our updates. And now, the big reason why uh, we have this call today is WWDC 2024. Uh, lots to talk about, lots to unpack. Uh, we have to obviously maintain um, NDA, so we have to, we can we can only talk about things that were publicly announced during the keynote and items that might be publicly on their websites and in documentation that is publicly available. Even if you are in the beta, it's still not public, so we we will not talk about everything. Um, so if you do have a question or if, or something about anything in here, uh, just be mindful of the NDA. Uh, but what we can talk or can talk about or show is uh, obviously Mac OS Sequoia uh, 15, iOS 18, iPad OS 18, TV OS 18, Watch OS 11, and Vision OS 2 already has been announced. The big thing that was announced during this where they saved a lot of time during the, key, during the keynote was Apple Intelligence and the Private Compute Cloud. Um, there is, I probably will update this to have a link in there for the private compute cloud, but there is a blog post that Apple put up regarding the security of private compute cloud. And um, it's pretty good. Um, run it by a few folks in security and they uh, didn't raise too many eyebrows on it, which was really nice. Um, so if you're interested in looking at private compute cloud, uh, I recommend that blog. Uh, I'll try to find the link and we'll post it in there. Uh, for Apple Intelligence, as they announced, uh, they will you know, it will utilize the neural engine on the uh, the device, as well as the private compute cloud, and give you the ability to use ChatGPT if you want. And I will ask the user if it wants to send it out. So lots of fun things in AI there, Apple intelligence. 
Uh, this is a big one for us administrators. Uh, this is live now. Uh, personal Apple account activation lock can now be disabled from ABM ASM uh, for registered devices. So if you go into ABM or ASM and you need to unlock the device, it is there now. It, and uh, yay, everybody, the, the, the people rejoice, especially people in education, I'm sure. Oh, it's everybody. <laughs> Should be. Should be. No more uh, submitting a... Uh, a single spreadsheet every a day and waiting three days for them to get back to you. Uh, enhanced iPhone mirroring with control. So this was kind of a neat little feature they added. I'm sure that um, some enterprises are going to be really thrilled about this, but uh, you can now mirror your iPhone on your computer and do full control with it, which is kind of neat. I've seen it in use. It's, it is kind of nifty uh, to see it. Um, I'm not sure like entirely how much people are going to use it, but uh, honestly, it's pretty cool looking. So if you haven't seen it, then take a look-see. Uh, <laughs> giant announcement, right? The the calendar, the calculator app for the iPad, finally, at long last, the biggest feature request of, of, of all time has been closed out, um, which is awesome. Uh, but no, they also did show off math notes, which was kind of cool, where you can draw... Uh, write math formulae and 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 um, you know queries, and it will answer it for you, which is kind of neat. Um, I believe they did announce that it can be controlled via mobile device management for schools. So, fret not if you're in a school, you don't have to uh, worry about your kids just doing their math work there and not showing their work by pointing to the iPad. But I certainly will use it because I suck at math. They did add some AI uh, to Xcode for code completion, so no major surprise there. It looks like I, it, all the you know good vendors that do IDEs and and you know code source control are adding that. So kind of a nifty little thing, and I believe you can um, just turn it off. Uh, they broke out the keychain um, iCloud keychain into a completely separate app called the Passwords app that goes across all all platforms. Um, I really like this. I, I I have used it. It's really neat. They did uh, fix a bug that was in uh, the first version. Uh, it, uh, we could probably talk about that later, but they basically fixed a bug where you can see all Wi-Fi um, passwords, including, I believe, managed ones. Not good. Uh, satellite messaging, so similar to the SOS for um, uh Calling, they have added satellite messaging now to this. So uh, kind of nice if you are somebody that goes off the grid or if you end up somewhere where you might not have cell service. And last but not certainly not least, Apple IDs are now Apple accounts. Uh, this was fun to listen to the uh, people at the um, Apple IT tech camp, camp talking about this. Every single time they said Apple ID, they had to correct themselves and say Apple account. And I think after a little while, they just gave up. They just were like, ah, you know, yeah, they were just like, you know what we mean. And we're like, okay, that's fair. Um, I think it was just, it, it reminded me of uh, when Jamf went from Casper to Jamf Pro and and everybody just called it Casper. And then they kept that year, every single person just had to be like, nope, nope, nope. So yeah. uh, those are the, oh, yeah, Serge? I was going to say rebranding takes a while. It does. Comcast doesn't know anything about that. I mean, Xfinity. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so those are the uh, that's the kind of the hit list for WWDC that we're going to uh, officially talk about on here. For uh, these are things that were announced publicly, uh, have information available publicly. Um, anything else on here that is public that anybody wants to just share about before we click on to the items of interest that didn't make the list? I'm sure we'll talk about more of that. All right, well, we'll get on to the items of interest then. Items of interest. Mackinac Foundation has announced a mentorship uh, program uh, pilot. So essentially, um, we are going to have the ability for uh, mentors to put their names in, and uh, mentees can essentially put their names in, and you can work with somebody uh, professionally, you know, in a mentor level to, um, you know, for career advice or whatever you might want to use it for. Um, this is a pilot program. I believe there's a few mentors in right now. Um, we, I want to say this has been, let me see if I can click that link right there. Yes, I can. Um, 
This is uh Graham Gilbert is going is one of the uh, is going to be one of the found is going to be the one uh, one of the founding members Laura Anthony and Gerard Massey uh, who's the board member. So this starts on July first. If you're interested, check out the link. Um, this is really uh, kind of a cool little thing that we're starting up. John, when was this announced? When was this announced? That's a good question. Um, I believe it was just announced. I get the date really quick. One sec, June twentieth. Yeah. Right. So it was six days ago it was announced and we're starting it. It'll be opening on July 1st. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Fair. Yeah. Thanks. If you're if anybody is at all interested in becoming a mentor, um, please uh put your name in. You know, we're we're gonna be looking for mentors. And if you all uh, have any idea, if you are want to be a mentee, uh, you know, that that's also fine. Um, you know, if, if you have if you want to learn more from from uh, somebody that might may have been around the block a little bit longer. Uh, I thought this was kind of important to put in here. Uh, Adobe now defaults to flat packages for Mac OS at long last, I guess. It just only took them, I don't know how long, forever. Yeah, only, only 15 years later. Yeah, so there you go. If you still manage Adobe at packages, I do feel for you because I did not like doing that. Um, but they now support, they now default to flat packages. So yay. Uh, so this is an interesting one. Uh, I term 3.5 came out uh, and subsequently 3.51 and 3.52. Uh, and they added a LLM integration uh, with that was uh, added in there. And it was originally not manageable by a configuration profile or MDM at all. So essentially they added an LLM and you, and you couldn't control it. Um, you, or you as in the enterprise could not control it or the administrator. Uh, so they released the point one, which... Um, uh, I believe it added the MDM feature, or am I missing misremembering that? Yeah, yeah, you could. They, it was in okay. it was in uh, three five one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, part of the issue, I think, if I'm remembering this correctly, was that um, it had a space for you to put an API key, but yep. as soon as you put something in there, um, it just started you doing it. You would attempt to send data to whatever URL was in there. Yeah. So even yeah, so, if, so potentially you could send that to somewhere you didn't want to send that to. So yeah, yeah. and so, people were not happy about this, and rightfully so. And there were I I remember seeing posts about like people like you know everybody like oh god you were you know they were doing the the Anakin you were the chosen one and you know and and I and I term was just like we're sorry we're going to back it up and they came out with the later one that did allow you to control it with MDM so you can then send an MDM. Uh, right. pro payload to disable that completely and that wasn't enough because uh so they they literally just spun it off into a a plug an optional plugin uh that you have to install to get it to work uh that is also manageable by mdm which is good so but yeah you still need that plugin for it to work so a lot of uh drama there with iterm so Um, the CIS Sonoma benchmark one version 1.1, 1. 1, I believe it's 1.1 1. 1, is now in the acceptance period, or I guess it's considered the concession period. Uh, so they removed a bunch of dated and problematic rules. Uh, so a good one, good example would be there was a couple, I believe, uh, the hibernate mode rule is finally gone at long last, let the peasants rejoice. Um, I and I believe skip that one. Yeah, I, I always did too, because we used to tell our organization, like, do you want kernel panics? Because this is how you get kernel panics. Right. Um, and then the other one that they removed was, um, God, there was another big one that was removed, and I cannot remember what it was. But there's a couple things in there. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to comment on it, you better get in there quick, because I believe on the first is when it's supposed to go into uh, published. So if you need to take a look at it, if there's anything that is wrong, Please comment on it. It always happens though. Whenever we do, whenever they push us out, is that right after it goes into publishing, we start getting a flood of people saying, "Oh, oh you missed something here," or it was a typo, or something like that. It happens with the Mac Mac OS Security Compliance Project as well. And <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna click this link because this is so Microsoft risks a fine uh, right after an antitrust uh, over Teams uh, with M365. So um, this is. You know, Microsoft going to, I guess, Microsoft, um, but also the EU going to EU. I can't, you know, completely say that Microsoft is completely innocent, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's some sort of, uh, they're, they're risking fines with bundling teams and M365 together, it seems. 
They've been doing that for like years though. If you install like the office, the full mm -hmm. office suite installer, uh, Teams has been in there for a couple of years now. Yeah. It just upgraded so it's new Teams because it was Teams Classic for a long time after they had already said everybody should be using new Teams. <laughs> like, like they were still shipping classic Teams in the full office and installer for like six months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the, the worst was the day of the cutover that a lot of, like when they were when Microsoft said that oh this is the cutover date for Microsoft for new teams versus old teams, yeah. uh, depend it, throughout the day depends on what CDN you hit uh, that you would get new or old or you would get the broken version versus the not broken version it was kind of a cluster so um, um, yeah yeah I know but classic is probably still going to persist for a while we still have legacy Outlook U UI that's been kicking around even though they were supposed to. Uh, end of life of it back in the yeah, that should be in here eventually because I believe they they added some verbiage that that's going to be on its way out too with uh with them pushing Windows users over to a different UI now so right right yeah <laughs> right fun yeah. times at Microsoft Microsoft will Microsoft all righty so we got some conferences got a lot of info on conferences actually so Mac DevOps YVR to Videos are being posted daily now, so check that out. TSU Mac Amends 2024. Registration closes this Friday. Um, the hotel has been sold out for months, probably. It, weeks, I don't know, months or weeks. The Penn State, yeah, has been sold out for a while, so you'll be staying somewhere else anyway. Um, but the registration for PSU closes Friday, so if you are still on the fence or if you just are like, oh, I'm not going to buy it yet, you might want to get on that. JNUC registration is open, and I believe they are sending out conference uh, a, a, a talk acceptances now, I believe, or if they already did, I can't remember. I know some people were just receiving them. Maxism in 2024, registration is open for that as well. Macaduck videos will be forthcoming. They are, uh, I believe that just ended two weeks ago, something like that. So they have to do all their editing. And objective by the C7.0 registration is open. If anybody's lucky enough to want to go to Maui, I put in for it and did not get accepted. <laughs> and lastly, X World 2024 videos are online. So there's your list of conferences for 2024 that have come or are coming. And with the conferences, that is usually the end of our uh, slide deck. Um, so normally this is obvious. This is where we will stop the recording and do some Q and A offline. But uh, before we do that, does anybody have anything they want to just add to this uh, that, you know, items of interest or a conference item that you know, think is important to, to talk about before I turn off the recording and we go into full uh, uh, secret talking mode, I guess. Nobody. All right, sweet. So I'm going to first stop the recording and then we will be off the record, so let me do that.